Hello students. Uh, in this session, we will study how to assign DH parameter and calculate transformation matrix for RPR a type robotic manipulator where first joint will be rotating and second joint will be slider but it is oriented 90 degree with respect to previous one. Our book reference will be introduction to robotics by John Craig. So in this session we will solve uh, this particular example where uh, we have first link will be rotating uh, around vertical axis uh, which is given by joint 1. Uh, our second link uh, will be sliding so it is given by joint 2 and we can have a tool which is attached at the end of second link which can be given as joint 3. Now let us begin with first of all assigning uh, joint axis and then coordinate system. So we will take origin at the top of the link uh, origin of joint 1 as well as base coordinate system. So coordinate system 0 which is our reference frame and joint 1 will be coincident at this particular location. Joint 2 uh, which indicates sliding of horizontal arm and joint 3 which indicates the rotation of the tool. Now axis Z1 which is rotation axis for joint 1 about vertical axis. Second joint will be of sliding type. So axis Z2 will be in the direction of motion in the direction of sliding and let us say we have right side is positive. So we assign Z2 towards right side at the origin of joint 2. Now joint 3 is rotating. So again Z3 is axis of rotation for the joint 3. Now our task is to assign X axis but unlike our previous example where all Z axis are parallel here it is not like that. Our Z1 axis is vertical and Z2 axis is horizontal. So we need to use right hand rule. Let's say Z1 is vertical and Z2 is horizontal. So as per definition of link twist which is defined as angle alpha from axis i minus 1 to axis i using right hand rule. Okay, So taking right hand rule we can have axis x1 which is given perpendicular to both the z axis that is inside uh, this plane of the screen. Hence we will assign x1 like this using right hand rule as both z axis are perpendicular to each other. Joint 2 is this horizontal arm which is sliding inwards and outward. Hence we will be having variable D2 which is joint offset which indicates the sliding of this horizontal arm at any given instant and axis X2 should give us this value of D2 as per the definition of joint offset. So we will assign X2 in the same direction of X1 as this is x axis for sliding joint. Similarly joint 3 is the last joint. So again uh, it is necessary to have x3 in align with x2 so that when theta 3 is 0 it will give us the uh, coincident condition for x2 and x3. Otherwise this joint 3 will be rotating. Now let us look at the DS parameter table. So joint base frame 0 and joint 1 is coincident hence we have link length 0, link twist 0, joint offset 0 and theta is theta 1. At joint number 2 as Z1 and Z2 are intersecting link length will be 0. Alpha we will provide we will write as plus 90 degree as we are using this right hand rule. We, uh, we have assigned x1 using right hand rule. d2 indicates sliding of this particular horizontal arm which we have shown here and x2 is assigned by considering d2 and as it is uh, sliding joint theta will be 0. Now for joint number 3 we can see z2 and z3 
are aligned in the same direction hence link length is 0 as well as link twist is 0 distance d will be l3 because if you look at this length l3 it is in the direction of z3 hence as per the definition of joint offset we assign di along z axis hence this constant length l3 we need to put in the column of d and theta 3 indicates rotation of the tool let us also put y1 axis again using right hand rule now we will calculate link transformation matrix using this particular uh, link transformation matrix which we have derived earlier so from joint 1 we have 0 t1 again we can see that it is indicating rotation about z axis by the angle theta 1 now 1 t2 here z2 is at 90 degree with respect to z1 hence if you look at this particular matrix we can see that orientation is indicating rotation about x1 axis by 90 degree and position shows as 0 minus d2 0 now minus d2 is because of the distance d2 is in the negative side of y1 which we can look from the previous figure 2t3 indicates the rotation of the third joint by angle theta 3 about z axis and it is at distance l3 again along z axis so l3 will be in the z coordinate and by multiplying 0 t1 1 t2 and 2 t3 together we can calculate 0 t3 which is given by this particular matrix